Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, we'll talk about our shared ancestry with sea squirts. Now this summer, I got to see some sea squirts in person. If you've never seen a sea squirt, they are a common organism found in the world's oceans. And as their name suggests, these creatures squirt water when exposed to the air. They live by filtering ocean water through a pump-like mechanism that sieves out detrital food particles from the sea water. They look a little like bags of snot. Not something very pretty to behold, although some can be very colorful. Sea squirts are also called tunicates, and they are placed within a group called Eurocordata and are closely related to chordates like Amphioxus. But what makes these bags of squirting snot creatures related to chordates? Well, it has to do with the fact that the juvenile larval stages of sea squirts exhibit a larval stage that closely resembles our ideal chordate ancestor. Most importantly, these larval sea squirts have a notochord, gut tube, dorsal nerve cord, tail, and even primitive eye spots near the front of the larvae. These features are lost as the animal attaches to the seafloor where it spends its adult life as a sessile creature living attached to the floor of the ocean or on living stuck on a rock or driftwood in the ocean. Sea squirts metamorphize into filter pump bags absorbing the notochord in the process of this change. Researchers are now finding that sea squirts are more closely related to vertebrates than Amphioxus, the cephalochordata. In fact, recent molecular phylogenies have found many similarities in the RNA between sea squirts and vertebrates, such that they have proposed a new branch called olfactories which implies the development of olfaction or chemosensory organs unique to this grouping. A more clear morphological similarity between the two groups is in the presence of a primitive heart and blood cells, which are pumped through the body in both groups. Blood is a novel feature not found in Amphioxus, but shared between Eucordata and Vertebrata. However, the blood in sea squirts is based on the metal vandium rather than iron, such as invertebrate iron-rich hemoglobin. So the blood in sea squirts is green rather than red. Sea squirts have a fossil record all the way back to the late Ediacaran. So it's very conceivable that the origin of vertebrates came about through a sea squirt that just refused to become an adult. This is referred to as pedamorphism, the retention of juvenile traits in the adult. All right now, you should be able to explain the theory of how eucordates, sea squirts, may have changed and given rise to a chordate-like ancestor. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Utah State University Geology Program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin-berger.org.